You're talking about validation of cold fusion. Yes. Uh, Proof that cold fusion works. Here's a close-up. This is more like 600x on some of the particles. And you'll notice that some of them go straight in and some of them have trails. Well, l let me let me back up for just a sec. Okay, so so one of the things that... Now, now you, you've talked about a fellow using radon detectors. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, let's go back to Dr. Ariani. And the CR39 is essentially a radon detector. Uh, when you get a, a little... Uh, cockroach trap trap like box and it's got little holes in it and you put it in your basement for a month what it's got is it's got these standard two millimeter by two millimeter pieces of CR39 and the processing firm simply develop it take a microscope count up the particles and if they see that two to six on there they say you're fine and, and this is this is probably the two to six route no this is this is uh, another example that he did if we go back up here the original this okay, is okay. basement of his lab so, for essentially a month yeah, so you you put you put the uh, you put the radar detector in the basement. Basically, it's just kind of like photographic film, then. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's like that, but it's very specific. It's alpha particles only. That and it, it picks up a couple of it picks up a couple of dots, and each right. one of those is an alpha particle. Right, and if you have like fifteen to twenty on here, what happens is uh, they'll call you up from the place and they'll say you have a problem and you need to vacate your house. Okay, so Dr. Oriani then he started using these in cold fusion cells. Right, he started using them in the overgasses of the cold fusion cell. And it's a spontaneous breakdown that's not predictable. So it took him about five weeks with several of these particles to find one that did this. And when he did found this, uh, this is the same sheet. So this is the control. Pre-developed. Pre -developed, and you can actually see these dots on here and you can see the, uh, the place where it was anchored. And this is the one that caught the burst. And if we go back here and look at his cell, he's just simply got these hung in the And this is a standard overgast. electrolysis cell. Yeah, just electrolysis cell, although it's probably got palladium in the uh, uh, cathode, and it's got, like, lithium. The, the traditional cold fusion yeah, stuff. Yeah, the traditional cold fusion stuff. So, yes, it validates cold fusion in terms of the, let's say, unknown phenomena. It's not necessarily fusion. Yeah. And that's a problem. Okay. This is the particle he's described in energetic charged particles produced in gas phase by electrolysis right. by R.A. Oriani and J.C. Fisher. Right. Um, now, you had also said that when he plotted these, this the, that, the, the scatter that we saw mm -hmm. in the second photo, that came off of one event. It came off of one event because of all the angles on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, film. On the piece pointed to a central origin about two centimeters away from where the film was. So so when, when when you're looking at that many alpha particles, that's not something where it's it's maybe an extended rate. That's just that's just one event. It that was he one event and if you put a dusting of uranium on that piece, you could do it by using uranium nitrate and just painting it on, laying it dry, develop it after a day, and you'll get almost as many particles on there. But if you look at them, they're isotropic. They're distributed in all different directions because the uranium doesn't care which direction the alpha particle comes out at. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, one other thing. Uh, uh, Dr. Ariani measured the lengths by using microscopy of these tracks, and they are appropriate for alpha-level energy going into the CR39. Now, the, the, the other thing that you would say is there are no known nuclear events that would produce that many alpha particles at exactly, once, right? Exactly, exactly. If you have an antimatter proton going into a heavy nuclei, it produces a star. But it's about like 70 particles that come out. And that's a billion electron volts being released in the explosion of that nucleus by the, the uh, anti-proton hitting it. Okay, and that's how they, one of the ways that they found the original antimatter along with finding the traces on the photographic plates that went the wrong way with regards to the, the magnetic field they were exposed to, but had the right mass. And it's, again, it's like this. You can look at the radius and the magnetic field and the trace on the photographic plate and decide, hey, that's a proton. It's a cosmic ray proton, and uh, it has a certain amount of energy. Oh, wait a second. It went the wrong way, and then it disappeared. And that took a while before they found a star, but when they found a star, from it dissecting a nucleus, then they knew it was an antimatter proton, and they were able to work out and say, wow, this is an antiproton. That's Dirac's work, by the way, and the people that are watching this and know their physics know that Dirac was really advanced because by theory, he said, my mathematics are right, then there's a whole universe of antimatter. Yeah. 
That's very good. Dirac was an interesting character. Well, and, and so for Cold Fusion, not only does it validate it, but it validates that it's it's giving off enormous amounts, amounts of, energy. of energy. But perhaps more than traditional nuclear? Would that be a fair statement? Or uh, In some respects, yes, because you see, when you do a traditional nuclear fusion, you get essentially four million electron volts out of it. When you have a, a, a uranium atom that you fission, it puts out 200 million electron volts per incident. So now if you take this and you multiply the 300,000 times 4 million electron volts, the number of electron volts that you get into is the tera electron volts. It's the range of nuclear accelerators in CERN. Dr. Oriani and Dr. Fisher, well Dr. Fisher's theory about polyneutrons still leaves me shaky, but he harassed Dr. Oriani to actually look for him, told him how. Dr. Fisher has a doctorate in radiochemistry, graduated as a fellow student in the mid-50s with Dr. Oriani. Dr. Oriani got his degree in electrochemistry. And Dr. Fisher started sending papers in the mid-90s to Dr. Oriani and pushing him to look for something like this, but Dr. Oriani didn't know how. So one day when Dr. Oriani got a little bit teed at his friend, his friend dropped back and said, oh, it's, it's simple, use CR39 and you develop it and you can look for these tracks. And Dr. Oriani, good man that he is, he's in his early 90s now, still sharp, uses the internet, found out how to do the track edge work, did it, and he found this. 